over the border that has been in the news all week long with President Trump back on his uh, threat of closing at least sections of the southern border of the United States if Congress doesn't take action. The Homeland Security Secretary, Kirsten Nielsen, is heading to the El Paso area at some point today, and uh, she's been talking about the crisis, in fact, used... Um, some severe uh, terminology saying it's, uh, you know, pretty much like a Cat 5 hurricane. Federation for American Immigration Reform President Dan Stein is with us now. And um, it has been, I brought this up, Dan, earlier in the week. It has kind of, we getting more agreement, I think, that this is a crisis. The deal and how to deal with it, um, that's still the big debate. But uh, tell us what you're seeing down there. And do you agree with that, that more people are coming around on it? Well, I mean, Trump doesn't lie and Congress won't comply. There's no question about it. We have a crisis on the border, not just because the apprehensions are up back historic levels, but yeah. because the nature of the flow has changed. And what we see is massive criminal and illegal fraud. This is fraud, asylum fraud on a massive organized trafficking scale. Now, Trump needs to get Congress to pass a tightly crafted, get McConnell to bring up three paragraphs, changes asylum law, changes detention law, Send it to the House, get a discharge petition. You need, you need 30 Democrats to sign, all the Republicans, bring it to the floor, because without Congress to actually change the law, traffickers and smugglers are going to continue to do this by the hundreds of thousands for the rest of the year. And there are a couple of other questions that have come up on this. One is obviously economic, which we, we, we should talk about. The other is humanitarian and how we deal with that particular part of the crisis now. So. What has to be done? The, the executive branch, I would assume, with Kirsten Nielsen going down there can deal with a lot of that, right? The humanitarian side of this, which is real. Well, part of the problem with not being able to interdict and deter the flow is people are coming in, they're getting basically admitted, and then they have they need medical treatment. Many of them have infections, contagious diseases. One of the reasons why the president needs to think about closing certain ports of entry is personnel need to be deployed to take people to get medical attention. Right. And then, of course, there are court law, court orders that require people to be released when they're going to disappear and, as everybody knows, never to be heard from again. And, I mean, none of this has to happen if you have a Congress that functions, a dysfunctional Congress. Congress in the face of an uncontrolled mass migration surge is a bona fide national security threat. We don't know who many of these folks are, can't verify identity. Many of the children are being recycled, put in harm's way. This is a ca catastrophic nat uh, humanitarian disaster that we as a country helped create. So as the Diane president finds, tries to focus, created it. the president tries to put focus on that this week, and I think that's what his goal is, is to get people, you know, keep people in the media talking about it, put pressure on the Congress to act in the way that, that you're talking about. I'm, I'm sure that's what he's trying to do. He's come out and he's threatened to close the southern border. Now, you said that maybe portions of the border might close. You know, most of the economic analysis, and the president, I think, himself conceded that this uh, yesterday, if you close down the entire border, you, it's going to hit our own economy and hit it pretty hard. The uh, Chamber of Commerce is of $1.7 billion in trade per day, United States and Mexico. One of the things they've talked about is say maybe we'll leave the truck lanes open because about almost 70 percent of the freight coming in is coming in via truck. So maybe they do that and close other portions. What do you make of well, how I that mean, might look, play out? The president, is, the president is trying to increase leverage on the Mexican government to control its southern border. Why this great, powerful nation of ours should have to rely on Mexico to stop the flow of people coming across illegally through Mexico and then crashing our borders is anybody's guess. But because we have to change the asylum laws, change detention law, and Congress won't act, the president is trying to use every single tool at his tool book. And I, I mean, avocados are great, but that doesn't mean we have to have avocados every day. But nobody wants to close the border. Right. But if the Mexican it's government won't that, though, listen any other way, I mean, what are you uh, going to do? Auto, there was an estimate yesterday the auto industry would be in big trouble in about a week. No uh, question you know. about it. No question it would hurt the U.S. economy, probably hurt the Mexican economy. But the, what the president is saying is, I'm the commander in chief. I right. have a responsibility to protect the American people. In the absence of help from Congress, I have to do everything possible to increase leverage on our, quote, allies right. and the Central American governments to do more to stop this organized trafficking and smuggling. Yeah, he said he'd be willing to take an economic hit, essentially. We'll see how far he goes with it. But Dan Stein, good to have your analysis today. Thank you. Thanks for coming on.